Okay, welcome back to this week's Cantonese studying. I hope everyone had a great week this week, stayed busy, stayed productive. Uh, it was definitely a very busy week for myself, lots going on in the world, lots going on with work and life and the usual, but uh, I'm really excited to continue on with our studying. Uh, this week we're going to continue with Ling's Stories 2, chapters 7 and 8. So we did four, five, and six last week. We're going to do seven and eight this week and then finish out this story next week with chapters nine and ten. So let's, without further ado, get into this and get started. So, um, oh, my tea update for the week, by the way. So this week, unfortunately, I've got basic green bag tea. So uh, our household, we have a lot of tea. We have a mix of bag tea and loose leaf tea, and unfortunately, the loose leaf tea is running a bit low, so we're trying to get through our stockpile of, you know, just off-the-shelf basic bag tea, so I've got a bag green tea today. Uh, if you're drinking tea these days, let me know what kind you're drinking and maybe what your favorite is. Okay, so as I mentioned, chapters 7 and 8 today, we're going through uh, Ling, something about a birthday present. So either Ling is giving or receiving a birthday present. And then we're going to go to visiting the colleague, so Unit 8. Uh, last week we did stationary, going with uh, co-workers to a karaoke bar. Um, I guess uh, the new colleague as well, chapter four. So as I scroll down and find where chapter seven is, just a reminder that uh, the story that we're reading, anytime we're doing studying on the stream, you can always find the link to the corresponding PDF or any of the associated material. Uh, in this case, this story is from the Cantonese Learning Center which I think is a website out of Hong Kong, and they have several of these little short stories. So it's it's been pretty useful so far. Okay, so for chapter seven, uh, birthday present, we have Sang Yat Lai Mat. So Sang Yat is birthday. Uh, lai Mat, I guess, is present. That's a, a new word for me. Uh, and so as we usually do, uh, we're going to go through the vocabulary for each chapter. So we'll go over the vocab for chapter 7, and then we'll listen to the audio, uh, see what we can pick up from the dialogue by listening, practice a, a first listen before we read, and then we'll go through and read the, the translation, read the Cantonese, see if there are any pieces that we made, uh, made a mistake understanding or something we didn't quite get. We'll fill that in as we read, uh, and then we'll listen one more time while following along with the Chinese characters so we can practice some Chinese character uh, reading practice as well. So first, let's do the vocab. Uh, part one starts with la peng yao. So la peng yao is boyfriend. Uh, Lam is the character for boy versus Loi, which is the character for girl. So Loi Peng Yao would be girlfriend. And uh, Peng Yao is just like friend. Next we have Sung Zha. So Sung is to give. And Zha is the word that makes it past tense. So this is gave. Okay, that makes sense. Sung Zha. Then we have Mo Kung Zai, which is a toy. Sang Yat Kat, uh, so birthday, and then Kat is, uh, I don't know what the exact meaning is, but it's, I guess it's um, one of those ones where the, the pronunciation sounds like a, a borrowed English word. So Kat uh, is also used for Kat Pin, which means. Uh, like a name card or like a tag. So sang and sang yet kat, which is birthday card. Um, next we have yat jung sang yat kat. 
So a birthday card. So we have yet, which is the character for the, for one. And then Zheng is a classifier. We've talked about this in previous streams where in Cantonese and in Mandarin as well, you have these classifiers for types of things. So yakgo, uh, yatjun, yapui. You have these these different classifiers for different types of things, whether it be cups or vehicles or buildings. And zheng is, and actually let's look it up. So zheng is, I think it's for like flat items, like paperwork maybe. So classifier for flat objects and sheets of things. So I think you could use this for, you know, different types of paperwork. In this case, it's a birthday card. So yet jung sang yet kat. Next we have hong, which is bear. Hong zai, little bear. So zai is like kid, and you can add zai at the end of a lot of different nouns to make it like the smaller version of something. It's kind of like diminutive, so hong zai is little bear. Then we have yetzek hong zai, which is one, and then the classifier zek I think is for animals, so yetzek hong zai, a little bear. Um, then we have teen fasik, teen fasik, so fasik um, sick is the word for color. So if you want a specific color, you put the word for the specific color before this, this character. Uh, a good example would be like the color white is box sick. So put that in here, box sick. So white, so the so bot on its own is white, and then sick is the word for color. You can do huck sick is black, huck sick, black. Uh, so this one is uh, fa sick. So the fa is from uh, cafe, which is coffee. Cafe. Uh, so I guess, I think for brown, there are multiple ways to say brown. I think fa sick is one, because coffee is brown colored. But there's another word for brown. Uh, let's see here. I forget what the other word for brown is. Uh, Looks like there are several different ones. I'm not seeing the the one that I've seen before. But just suffice it to say that this one is kind of like specifically and then I guess teen is must be light, so light light coffee color, light brown. Okay. Next we have Daiju. So Dai is to wear. And then G is, uh, it, when you add it at the end, it's, it modifies the, the way that this verb works. It's similar to, so up here we said songzo, which is you did this in the past, it's past tense, you gave. So give plus zo is gave. This one, G, this is, um, Let's see how to explain this. This one is actions that you're currently doing and they're actions that you're sort of actively performing. So when you wear a hat, you, you put on the hat and that state of being, you're continuing to wear the hat until you take the hat back off. So that's G. 
that it means that you're wearing it in the present tense and it's it's actively on um, until you remove it. I'm struggling to think of another verb or another example for that, but that's what the ju is. Dai ju, wear ing. They say they say for accessories, so so maybe it's more specifically just for accessories. I think though that it's uh, if you remove dai and put something else there, ju itself is like that ongoing, like maybe turning the power on, like the power is flowing. That would probably be ju, and then when you cut the power, then then the thing turns off. Okay, next we have lam sik. So here again we see sik is the color word, and lam is the the word for blue. So lam sik is blue. Mo is hat. Yat dang mo is a hat. Yat dang mo. Then we have jerk g, jerk g. So jerk is another way to say wear, uh, but this is for clothes. So you could say jerk sam is to wear a shirt. Jerk sam. Okay, next we have fun hong sik, which is pink. Um, hong by itself is red. So, and then fun is the word for powder or powdered. So this is powder red color, which is pink. Fun hong sik. Next we have boy sum, which is vest. That's brand new to me. I've never learned the word for vest. You can see the second character here is the character for heart. So sum. Not sure what boy is. But boy sum is vest. Next we have Goyang. Goyang, the appearance. Okay, that's also new to me. Goyang. We know that uh yang itself this this yang can be used like yat yang, which means the same. Or gum yang, like so on these things. Uh, and this ga is the general uh, the general particle that you hear all the time. When you don't have a, a more specific classifier, you would say yak ga, one of, one thing. Whereas before we saw above that, uh, what was it, for, for the birthday card, it was yak jang. Ga is like the universal one. If you don't have a more specific classifier, you just say ga. And it's also the same ga for like li ga, here, ga ga, there. The second character in both of those, the ga is this character. Next we have uh, ha, ha ngoi. Ha ngoi. So ngoi is love. Uh, I guess together, Hongoi is lovable. That's also new to me. Makes sense, though. You've got the love character and then something modifying it. Uh, next, we have Tak Yi. Ho Tak Yi. So Tak Yi is cute. Next, we're on to part two. We have Ge Tak, which is to remember. Um, just like most words you can negate this using m mm. so m mm da is not to not remember m mm da not remember ge da is remember and then you can add ask if someone remembers using the yes no style of question that's commonly employed when you speak so you can say lay so you lay ge m ge da do you remember Lay game, get that. Lay game, get that. Ah, so get that is remember. Next we have say go. So young. Say is small. Say go young. Go zan, go zan. So at that time. Go is 
the same ga for ga ga, so that or or there that thing versus li ga this thing, ga ga that, and so that's why you have that here is ga means that, ga zan that time. Next we have the title of the chapter, so sang yat lai mat, birthday present. Okay, continuing on, we have ji fan zai, ji fan zai. So ji is cook, fan is rice or meal, and then finally zai is like the small, the kid word. So ji fan zai is cooking toy. Then we have gung zai, which is doll. Uh, then we have wun, wun gai, toy. This is the same character for wan, which means uh, to have fun. So we'll have to listen if if this is a character where the tone, the the pronunciation changes for this word. So is it actually wun or is it wan? Since they put wun here, I would assume the pronunciation changes, but. Uh, we'll have to listen for that. So wun gai is toy. Wun gai shun, toy ship or boat. So shun is is ship. It's it is boat. So toy boat. Wun gai te, te is car. So it makes sense. You see the pattern is toy and then the noun toy ship. This is toy car. Wun gai fa te. Fa is fire car, which is train. Trains are fire cars. So this is toy train. Okay, and then finally we have for part three, dai zhao, which is to grow up. So bigger, so dai is big. Zhao is past tense. So to have gotten bigger is to grow up. Then we have mo zhao, no longer anymore literally means didn't plus again. So this is the same mo as in yao mo. Uh, yao is to have, mo is to not have. So you, you hear this all the time, lei yao mo blank. Do you have this? Lei yao mo ga te. Do you have a car? Lei yao mo ga te. Um, and then Doi is, this uh, character means again, like another, an additional time, or an additional, it just means again. So when you hear doi gain, which is a common Cantonese phrase, so doi gain, you, you say that when you say goodbye to someone. I didn't actually know this for the lo longest time. I just, I knew the phrase, doi gain. It means, like, see you later, see you again. Well, if you think about it, it's comprised of joy, and then the character gain is to see. So it's literally see you again. It's again, and then the character for see. Joy gain. So this is mo joy, which is not again, basically. Didn't again. Next, we have mui feng. Mui feng. So, mui is every, that means every. Mui yat is every day. Mui lin, every year. Mui uh, gu tao, every hour. So, mui feng means whenever. I don't know feng, so that's, that's new to me, but it's every something, which means whenever. Next, we have duck beat, which is special or especially or particularly ho duck beat special then we have ju which is to cook we saw that above here with ji fan zai the cooking toy and then finally we have sung which means uh 
food dishes. So this is like an entree or a plate of food. It's it's an item that you've ordered on the menu is a song. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that's all I have to say on that. Okay, so I think for me, this one may be a little bit difficult just because there are a lot of new nouns, things that I'm not that familiar with. I've seen the individual pieces of these words, but uh, as usually goes, uh, as is usually the case when listening the first time to a dialogue, it can be a little overwhelming if you hear all these lists of things kind of rattled off. So, so we've basically got a bunch of different toy names, and then we have uh, some time words, um, a bunch of other sort of items, clothes, colors. So it, uh, it'll be interesting to see if, is this one going to be complex sentence structures or is it just going to be like big lists of things? Okay, so let me get this synced up to the beginning part of the dialogue. We'll scroll that off screen for now. And let's take a listen to chapter seven. Uh, listen closely and see what we can pick up. After we listen, I'll try to summarize to the best of my ability what I heard and what I got from it. Uh, feel free to do the same uh, if you're watching as well. Think about what you're getting out of it, and then we'll review. 第七課生日禮物我男朋友阿成送了一隻毛公仔和一張生日卡給我這隻毛公仔是一隻熊仔這隻熊仔淺啡色他戴著一頂藍色的帽著著一件粉紅色的背心個樣很可愛很得意我記得小時候我生日那時媽媽都會送生日禮物給我好像煮飯仔、芭比公仔、玩具船、玩具車和玩具火車這樣現在大了媽媽已經沒有再送生日禮物給我但是每逢生日媽媽都會特別煮一些
Okay, so seven part one says Ngo Lam Pang Yao a sing sung jaw yet zek mo gung zai tung yet dung sang yet kat bay ngo. So it was actually her boyfriend a sing. So his name is a sing. Sung jaw is he gave yet zek mo gung zai. So we said mo gung zai was toy. Gave her one toy tung. Yet jung sang yet kat bang So one birthday and then gave me a birthday card. So bay is we've learned that in the past, bay is to give. And then ngaw is the character for me. So gave me. Next we have Zek Mo Gung Zai Hai Yet Zek Hong Zai. So the toy, the stuffed toy is uh, a little bear, like a bear cub. Zek, zek hong zai qin fa sik. So the bear is, uh, the bear is light brown colored. So we, I, I didn't get that part. I was confused on if the bears were on the card or if they were the stuffed toy. I, I missed the stuffed toy at the beginning. So the bears, you know, light brown colored. Kai dai ji yat dang, uh, yat dang lam sik. Gemo. So the the bear is wearing a blue colored hat. Jerk ji yet gin fun hong sik geboi sum and a pink vest. So the stuffed bear is wearing those two items. Okay. Then we have Goyang Ho Ho uh Ho Hongoi. Ho Hongoi. This is a very lovable appearance. Ho Tuck Yi, very cute. You'll hear Ho Tuck Yi a lot, different dialogues. Can mean cute or like just interesting or whatever. Okay. Next, for part two, we have Ngo Ge Tak Sai Go Ngo Sang Yat Go Zan. So I remember. Uh, at the time, basically the time when I had birthdays as a kid. I remember I was little, birthday at that time. So I'm remembering, I remember the, the birthdays as a kid. Mami do wui sung sang yat lai mat bang hua. So uh, at the time, the mom will will also give me birthday gifts. Ho chi, such as ju fan zai, barbie gong zai, so a cooking toy, a, a doll, wun gai shun, wun gai te, tong wun gai fa te gam. So then the the toy boat, the toy car, the toy train, etc. Yi ga dai zuo, ma mi yi jing mo zui song sang yat lai ma bei ngo. Oh, okay. So, so uh, the mom, now that she's older, the mom doesn't give birthday presents. Dan hai, however, or but, mui feng sang yat, ma mi do wui tak bi ju di, ngo zhong yi si ke song. So, however, whenever it's my birthday, mom will, you know, will cook the well in particularly or or especially will cook uh the the food that I like to eat the dishes that I like to eat I was con kind of confused there if the duck duck beat if especially if it was that the mom was cooking dishes that she especially likes but I don't think that's what this is saying. It's saying that the mom will especially go out of her way to cook the dishes that she likes. Not that they're dishes she especially likes, uh, likes, but that the mom will go out of her way especially to make them. All right, so that was a bit rough because, uh, I, at least for me, I missed several of the key points there. I missed the relationship between the card and the bears and the, the items. That was a big uh, a big miss, and then uh, 
this part here, not quite understanding what they're saying with uh, the mom not giving the birthday gifts anymore. Um, I think that's fair. Like, like I was saying, at least for me, several of these are new. Um, and I, I always find that when it's these, when we do these streams, the first dialogue is kind of hard because it's like, it takes time to kind of warm up, but, uh, we'll see how we do on the next chapter. But I think this is a, a good chapter to study. It's got a number of interesting combinations like motoy. That's a, that's an interesting phrase or word, um, uh, dies off or growing up. These are things that I think they feel like they're probably fairly common, but uh, for me at least studying, I haven't used these much at all yet. So they're they're probably pretty valuable high frequency words that since I don't know them, they're they're definitely worth spending some time on. Okay, so now what we'll do is listen one more time, follow along, and uh, see if we can practice looking at the characters a bit. Okay, so let me rewind the audio, get back to the beginning of the track. And then where are we at here? Here we go, part one. And go. 第七課,生日禮物。我男朋友阿成送了一隻毛公仔和一張生日卡給我。這隻毛公仔是一隻熊仔。隻熊仔淺啡色,它帶著一頂藍色的帽,著著一件粉紅色的背心,個樣好可愛,好得意。Okay. I am encouraged that even though I'm learning a lot of new words from chapter to chapter, uh, a decent number of them are combinations of existing characters that uh, we've picked up together along the way. So it's, it's nice that it really does build on itself. So components or radicals, which we haven't discussed much of on the live stream, but, you know, components are what characters are made up from, are made up of, and words are typically, a lot of times, they're multiple characters, sometimes a single character, but a lot of compound words are multiple characters. And so it's a lot of mix and match where maybe you know all these individual characters, but then you can combine them in a number of different ways to form more complex uh, more complex thoughts or expressions. I think the the train word that we just talked about makes for a good example there. We say fa-te. It's literally the word for fire and the, the word for car. Trains at least used to have, um, were they coal-fired or they had they had boilers where they used wood and coal and they, you're, you're literally burning a, a, a fuel uh, producing steam and so there's actually fire in the train. Obviously, that's not really the way they work anymore. But when the word was formed, when the f word was first used, it makes a lot of sense. So I, th I think that that's sort of like, I don't want to say mathematical, but it's it's very logical. And it, it kind of takes some of the edge off of the difficulty of learning the characters. On the surface, it seems, at least to me, when I first started looking at it, it's like, this seems impossible. But it's just like anything else, actually, where it's the more more practice you put into it, you can chip away at it. You can make a little bit of progress here and there, and you just keep working at it. And it's, I always, like I've said on the previous streams, the analogy I keep using for myself is it's kind of like a foggy mirror, like in your bathroom, and it just slowly that uh, steam or that fog kind of goes away and the picture becomes slightly clearer through time. That's sort of how I feel like this process is working for me where it's 
you can't really say I picked up some some word or some piece of information and I've unlocked that forever. It it's really more of a process of I learn something, I forget it, I learn it again, I forget it again, and it just slowly through time it starts to sink in, and the picture becomes slightly clearer. So I, I'm glad for those of you watching. I'm glad you're along this path with me and. Please do let me know how your progress is going, but you know, every time I do these, I'm I'm encouraged to keep going. So I think it's it's definitely serving the purpose. Okay, so that was chapter seven. Now we are going to do one more chapter today. We're going to do chapter eight. Um, let me pull that up now. Okay, so chapter eight, remember, was visiting the colleague. And we're going to follow the same exact uh, path that we did for the previous chapter, including the vocab, including the first lesson, the read, reading out loud, and then following along with the character reading as well. Okay, so chapter eight, visiting the colleague. Uh, so the word Tom so, so first of all, the chapter is called Tam Tong Si. Tam Tong Si. So Tam means it does mean to visit. So you can you can Tam your grandma, you can Tam your Peng Yao, you're visiting someone. And then Tong Si is that's a compound word that means like a coworker, a colleague. So Tam Tong Si is to visit the colleague. Okay, as for vocab, part one, we have Wui Gai Bo, which this says is accounts department. Now, if you've been watching the other streams, you know that we're on Ling's Stories 2. There was a Ling's Stories 1 that we did several weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago at this point, and... I believe that was the story where we were introduced to what she's doing, what Ling is doing for her work. She's working, or at least I think for a time she was working as an accountant. Maybe she still is. At that time, we learned that Wei Gai is, means like accounts or accountant. Wei Gai. And furthermore, we know that Gai is like to count. Uh, separately from that, I think... In one of the other dialogues, we learned that Bo Moon, Bo Moon is department. You can say Bo for short. So this makes sense together. It's Wui Gai Bo. It's accounting or accounts department. There's a good example, too, of how your previous understanding of other words, other characters, it assembles together pretty well in these larger words. Next, we have Ging Lei, which is manager. Then we have, looks like maybe a sentence fragment or a, kind of a template here. So we have Tai Zhao, and then something in between, Jing Oi. So apart from Tai Zhao is like except or apart from Tai Zhao. Jing Oi is, I guess, besides. That's like a, a sentence structure I'm not that familiar with, so something we can learn in this dialogue about how that works. Next we have Zhong Yao, which is, this says is still have. I've also seen it listed as like moreover, still have. Then we have Bao Kut, Bao Kut. Bao is like bag or wrapper. Kut, so bao kut is like uh, contents, not really contents, but include, I guess, slightly different. Bao kut. Then we have yi yi tin, yi tin. Previously, this is the same yi as in sa yi, which means therefore. And tin, I believe this is the same tin as in. Um, like in front, so teen bean.
yeah front so so teen teen is in front how is back teen bean is front side how bean how bean is uh back side back rear behind how bean this is the same bean as in the question word bean go who so bean is the question word go is is um that place word we were talking about before li go 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 bean go is the question version of that li go this go go that so li go 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 bean go is which or whose it can mean it can mean which as well so who okay next we have sin sang which is like te it, it can be used for teacher although i think that's out of fashion now i think it's um i think it's more common to use low low c which is i think the mandarin way of uh saying it i think that's like lao shi lao shi in mandarin so low c is teacher but I guess it used to also be common to say Sin Sang is, is teacher as well. Um, it also just means mister. So uh, you, you'd say your last name followed by Sin Sang would be mister that person. So Mr. Smith would be Smith Sin Sang. Next we have Yatai, which means together. Then we have Dai Gun, recently. Zheng Guan O, Zheng Guan O. So this is a particular area in Hong Kong. I don't know exactly what this area is, um, if I've been to that neighborhood or not. Next we have Lao, which is uh, says a flat or apartment. I think this is also, let me double check that. I think this is also the word for floor in general. Lao. Yeah, so this also means Lao. Uh, Lao also means the floor. So like which floor the building is on or that the unit is on. But it, it can mean a, a multi-storied building as well as a Lao. Then we have Yat Cheng Lao, which is a flat. Uh, cheng is, the word Cheng means layer. So it's kind of like one layer, one one. You know, sometimes you, you sometimes you have to kind of reason about these words holistically, but it is good to kind of pick them apart and see if you can think about why they might have put all the characters together to mean this word. So yet Cheng Lao is a flat. Next we have Ngam Ngam. So Ngam Ngam is they're saying just like. I think that means like right now. Yeah, so just now, like right immediately, basically just now. You also see this by itself. There, I think it means correct. See, just fine. Let me double check that. So let's say correct. Maybe mistaken. Yeah, I don't see it here. Let me double check with uh, Bing Translator quickly. So I've I've seen this used in in the question form where you can say um. Um, let's change this to Cantonese. This is not as reliable as the dictionaries. 
because it's the translations are always kind of fuzzy. Sometimes they're way off, but I think this is the form I've seen where it's basically asking, is it right? Is it correct? I don't see that precise definition here. So treat that with a grain of salt. But point, point being that uh, that character can actually mean a number of things based on usage. Next we have bun, which means to move. Bun hai, to move to. Uh, remember where uh, hai means to go versus lai. So hai is go, lai is come. So they're opposite. And so bun Bun hai is to move, kind of implies a direction. A lot of the verbs we've seen so far in the stories, they, uh, they'll they add, uh, the, the verb will have another word that indicates direction, like uh, lot lai. So the second word, lai, it means come again. So lot means fall. So... It means sort of to to come down, I guess. Let's double check that as well. Yeah, to come down. So here's a case where I'm talking similar to what I'm talking about, where you have a word, but then you have another ending that indicates the direction. So here, that's that's why it's hai is bun hai is it's sort of directing the action, directing the word. You're you're moving. You're going to move. You're you're moving in that direction. Um, you could say chut hai, which is to go out, and it's the same sort of idea where you're saying chut, which is outside, and then hai, so you're going out. Okay. That makes sense to me. Then we have bun zha hai, bun zha hai. So move past tense. So you put the zha in the middle. Okay. I'm already seeing that this, this seems a little bit more, I would say useful words in the sense that it's not just big lists of proper nouns for toys and that sort of thing, but it probably will mean that the dialogue is a little bit more difficult to understand as well. Part two has tam, which means to visit again. Yart, which is to arrange an appointment. Yart holds all. Arrange an appointment well. So that makes sense to me, but I, I don't really know. The individual parts make sense, but I don't know. When would you say that you arranged an appointment well? I'm not sure. We'll figure it out in context in the dialogue. Then we have an zao, which is afternoon. So you could say an zao tan, which would be like lunch. Um, there's another word for for afternoon called ha ng. Ha -ng. So you'll hear ha -m ta, which is afternoon tea. I don't know if you could say an zao, an zao ta. You, you, you probably could, but maybe it would be a little bit awkward. Not sure. Then we have de ti zam, MTR station. So if we, if we break apart this word again, zam. Zam is stop. Uh, not stop as in don't move, but stop as in like a bus stop or a subway stop or a train stop. So you'll hear this like ba si zam, which is the bus stop. So zam is stop. And then de ti is the de ti is the underground. So or subway and the MTR is a subway a part of the MTR is a subway system so this is another way you could say this is that this is a subway station more more generically it's a subway station this is in Hong Kong so that's the translations MTR station 
Okay, and then we have dung. So that just means to wait for someone or something. So I wait for you. I wait so long. All right, moving on to the next page. Gunju, 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 Gunju. Sometimes I'll pronounce the words multiple times if it's a difficult word for me or I feel like I don't quite have the tone right. It helps me. It, it may help you. I, I find that reading aloud like this is definitely helpful because I can hear my mistakes a little bit better than if I'm just, you know, if I'm pronouncing it in my head but not not vocalizing it i might not you know I, i'm not really getting the speaking practice so gun ju means after that or and then then we have hang hai hang hai so again we know that hai is to go and this word hang means to walk so you can say hang gai which means to sort of walk out on the street. Guy is street. Hang guy. Hang hoi or hang hoi is to walk, just sort of generically. Then we have uk yun, uk yun, which is a residential estate. So it's one of these big estates with, you know, multi story buildings, maybe some shared space, gardens etc. This is a new word for me. I actually learned this, or, you know, the first time you encounter a word, you're not really learning the word, but I, I guess I should say I I first came across this word actually yesterday. Um, as, as you may know, if you've been following along, I do these streams on Sundays and, and then post them on YouTube afterwards, but of course I do my own studying offline throughout the week as well. Flashcards, I do other other dialogues, other stories from either books I've purchased or uh, some other things, which I, I'll, I'll get into maybe in some, some videos in the future. But this came up yesterday, and I was confused because it's the same ok as in ok, which is house, or ok, which is family, like house people, family. But I'd never heard of ok yun. And so it's this residential state estate idea where it's this big cloister or this big group of buildings, um, more so than an individual house. So uk yun. Uh, I think this is probably less common in America, but when when I hear uk yun, I can think of some specific areas in Hong Kong, and I think this might be more popular in Europe as well. Not sure, but that's what uk yun is. And then finally, in part three, we have Ho Lang. Very pretty. So Lang is pretty. Ho is good or very. So you can add Ho in front of a lot of adjectives or a lot of, actually a lot of, um, I guess adjectives. Yeah. You add Ho in front of something, it just basically means very and then the next thing after it. Then we have Yak Gong altogether. I've seen this before used for like, uh, there's some other dialogue offline I, on, in the Teach Yourself book a long time ago. I think they were using this for an exchange at like a store and the clerk says something like altogether it, it costs this much. So I think it, it means that sort of thing, like altogether. Then we have Dai Ha, Dai Ha. This is a kind of like a classifier. It says building. I I looked this up and it's sort of like reserved for larger buildings. I think the example of my flashcards was things like Empire State Building or like a massive complex. They're they're die ha. So that's what that's used for. Then we have uh bat zha. Bat zha dai ha. Eight blocks of buildings. Bot is eight, and then da, dai ha. Next we have dai, 
第六座 ，block six， 第六座 ，where 第，呃，第 is the character that means they they call it like the ordinal character. So you use that and then follow it up with a number, and it translates into like an ordering. So for example, diet. So diet is first. Dai is second. Dai sam is third. So that's how you can talk in terms of a sequence or an ordering of things. You could say, maybe you could say something like the first car. Diet gate, diet gate, the first car, or、um, the third day. Dai sam yat, dai sam yat is the third day. So in this case, they're saying dai luk zha, dai luk zha, where I guess zha is block. It's not a word I'm that familiar with, but they're saying the sixth. Black or black six. Then we have one do, one do, where we know one is to means means to find something. All one, all one blank. I'm looking for something.、Uh, or lay one, lay one bingo. Who are you looking for? Lay one bingo. And then we know that from previous stories that do. Is how you say successfully. So it's another ending word. One do is to means you've you've sort of searched or found successfully the thing you're looking for. Versus,、uh, if you add m do, you put that negative prefix m do. So one do means you unsuccessfully looked for something. So that's one do. Then we have yong. Ngo yong, blank. I use, so yong is use. Ngo yong.、Uh, can't think of a good example. Ngo yong. Ngo yong li ko tin lo. I use this computer.、Uh, and then finally, wow, this this seems like a large set of vocab. So I'm nervous about the、uh, <laughs> about the listening part. We'll see how it goes. So finally, we have. Dai gong, uh, dai gong ge, intercom. So intercom is dai gong ge.、Uh, we know that. So ge means machine.、Um, so fei ge is a good example. Fei means to fly. Fei ge is flying machine. Can you guess what the the meaning is? So fei ge is plane. So it's a flying machine. Fege.、Um, another example might be da zige, da zige. So hitting characters machine, which is a typewriter. Da zige, da zige. So that's the last character. The middle character gong just means to talk. So talking machine. And then doi doi actually means like. With regards to, I guess in this,、uh, putting it together in this way, it means intercom. So re- with regards to speaking machine, dai gong ge, dai gong ge. Okay, wow, tough, very tough. So I want to go back up and just review again. What was the actual focus of this chapter? So the focus is visiting a colleague. Okay, so next we're going to try our best to listen to the dialogue, see if we can understand what it might be trying to tell us about visiting a colleague. Dai Ba Fo, Tam Tong Si, Wu Gai Bao, 
，探阿兰，我哋约好咗，晏昼三点钟喺将军澳地铁站等，跟住我哋就一齐行去阿兰住嘅屋苑。嗰、那个屋苑好新好靓，一共有八座大厦，阿兰住第六座。我哋揾到第六座之后，就用对讲机揾阿兰，阿兰就开门俾我哋。Wow. Okay. So that was very difficult for me. How was how was the difficulty for you?、Um, I think I did okay, but yeah, that was that was pretty challenging. So what I gathered was something to the effect of Ling and I think it was her four coworkers. I don't know if it was just describing the four coworkers or if it was basically what they were—they were all going to go visit this coworker Alan, I guess. I don't know if Alan's included in the four number or if it's four plus Alan, but said something about. Oh, oh, and she said the new coworker was among the four. Something about、um, one of them, I think. Used to live with this coworker, Yatsaiju, so live together. And then, then they said, I think one of, I, I guess this Alan guy、uh, moved from one neighborhood to another. I, I don't remember the names of these neighborhoods very well that we just learned, but moved from one to the other. It's in a. Uh, in, in one of these ok、uh, ok's, one of these residential plazas or big residential areas, and they went to. I think they said they scheduled the appointment for three o'clock. I want to say they were waiting for the MTR. They went to whatever the neighborhood was, and then. I guess that's where the Dai Lok Dai Lok Ta the six block is. That's where they were walking to his. That's his building, and then something about basically they found it. They called him on the inter intercom, and then he, Hoi Moon, he's he basically let them in, opened the door to let them in. So that's kind of what I got from that.、Uh, it's a bit touch and go. There was. That one felt pretty long. It's only fifty-seven seconds, but it's amazing how long that can feel when it's something you're really having to focus on to try to listen to, and it's very easy to get kind of overwhelmed. One thing I was going to mention is I don't typically do this, but you could always play these dialogues at half speed. For example, if it's too fast. the The path I've been taking so far is I started out with some easier books that I felt like they did a good job. So, Teach Yourself, for example, did a good job of increasing the speed and increasing the complexity, so that the first couple dialogues were like, you know, thirty words and they were pretty slow. And then as you got later on in the book, they got longer and faster and more complex. So for me, I I like the challenge of just listening to it. If I don't understand it at all, that's okay. Um, but that is another idea. I I may experiment with that at some point and see if listening to something at half speed or three quarter speed if that's valuable or not. Okay, so let's read together now. See what we picked up. So part one, we we gai bo tui da ging lei jing oi. So in the accounts department, apart from the manager, okay, this was that that sentence structure we had talked about. So Tai Zhao blank Jing Oi, Wei Gai Bo Tai Zhao Ging Lei Jing Oi. So in the accounts department, apart from the manager, Zhong Yao Sei Ge Tong Si. We have we still have four coworkers or colleagues. Bao Kut Ngo, so including me. Oh, so that's that's how include works. Bao Kut Ngo, so including me. Alan, Alan. A Kern, Tong San Tong Si, A Yin. 
So it's the four including her. So three coworkers plus her. And this is Alan. This is the guy we were talking about. Or I, it could be a, a woman as well. Um, I was just, uh, it sounded like Alan to me, the English name Alan, but it's Alan. Alan. Okay, so Alan, a kerng, tong, sun tong, si, a yin. Okay. Alan, yi tin, tong kai sin sang, get okay yan. Yat tai ju. So it says Alan, previously with her husband's family members, or family member, lived together. Okay, so that there's a point where I, I misunderstood. I thought it was a co-worker used to live with them, but it was uh, she used to live with her husband's family. Okay. Let's scroll up here so you can see it on the stream. Now it says Jaigan Kai Tang Kai Sinzang Mai Zha Zhang Guan O Yat Tang San Lao. So recently her and her husband Mai Zha, so Mai is to buy, Zha is past tense. Mai Zha, Zheng Guan O, a, a new flat in Zheng Guan O, which is Yat Tung, where we said Tung is level, Lao is like a flat, so it's a Sun Lao because it's a new flat. Sun Lao, Yat Tung, Sun Lao. So I, therefore, Uh, so I am am bun zha hai, bun zha hai guan ju. They just, just now uh, moved to zheng guan o to live, zheng guan o ju. All right, part two. Gam yat today, ngo a kerng tang a yin yat tai hai zheng guan o tam alan. So today, the three of us are going to go together to Zhengguanou and visit Alan. Wadei, we, yer ho, yer ho zha, ho zha, an zhao sam dim, sam dim zheng hai. Let me, let me read this out to the, the comma here. So, wadei, yer ho zha, an zhao sam, sam dim zheng hai. So we arranged in the afternoon, three o'clock, um, at the the station, Zhengguanou Station, to meet to wait. Oh, okay, got it. So the three of them are going to arrive there, go their own separate ways to get there, and then they're going to use the Zhengguanou Daytizam to meet to Deng. 跟住我哋就一齊行去阿蘭住嘅屋苑。So then after that, the we'll um, we'll then together go to Alan's, uh, the place where Alan's staying, the residential estate. All right. Finally, part three. 嗰個屋苑 Oh, yeah, I, I caught this part, but I forgot to mention it in my own interpretation. So, ho sun ho lang. So, it's new and it's it's beautiful, this uh, residential estate. Ya gong yao ba zha dai ha. So, all together, it's eight buildings, or eight blocks of buildings. Alan ji dai luk zha. So, lan lives in block six. So after we found block six, Zihao, remember, this is, Zihao means afterwards. Zitin is before. Zao yung daigong wan alan. We use the intercom to basically call after alan. Alan zao hoi mun bei So then alan opened the open the door for us wow that was a bit rough that was a tough one but it's pretty good 
All right, so next we're going to finish up with following along. Listen to this one more time and focus on the characters. 第九课会所。到咗亚兰屋企，我哋除鞋，佢俾拖鞋我。This is this is chapter nine. Sorry, let me restart this audio with chapter eight. 第八课探同事。会计部除咗经理之外，仲有四个同事，包括我阿兰、阿强同新同事阿燕。阿兰以前同佢先生嘅屋企人一齐住，最近佢同佢先生买咗将军澳一层新楼，所以啱啱搬咗去将军澳住。今日我阿强同阿燕一齐去将军澳探阿兰，我哋约好咗晏昼。三点钟喺将军澳地铁站等，跟住我哋就一齐行去阿兰住嘅屋苑。嗰、那个屋苑好新好靓，一共有八座大厦。阿兰住第六座，我哋揾到第六座之后，就用对讲机揾阿兰，阿兰就开门俾我哋。Great. Always makes a lot more sense after you read through. You can pick up all the individual breaks in between different words that you might not be as used to.、Um, so that was pretty good. By the way, if you're if you're listening and you do know a bit about Cantonese, if you find something that I say that's inaccurate or you、uh, any mistakes, please、uh, send me a message on. On the video, or however you want to reach out to me, there's all kinds of contact information on the video. But I want to make sure that any of the things I'm saying are accurate. So please do feel free to correct me where I make a mistake. I'm sure I've made plenty already so far. But、uh, you know that's that's part of the process, and that's what I'm hoping to eventually get out of this series of live streams for studying is try to build up a set of material, but then also build up a bit of a community around. Doing the necessary work to progress and improve, and that includes making mistakes. So, please do feel free to reach out to me if you find any any issues or mistakes with what I'm saying. All right, so that was chapter seven and eight. We're going to hold off on nine and ten. That will be the for the final episode for、uh, this story, which we'll do next week. But for now, we're going to do a few minutes of vocabulary. Review in the form of flashcards, which is for anyone watching previous streams. That's no surprise. We've been doing this pretty much at the end of every stream. So the way this works is we have some different vocabulary decks.、Uh, I like to review on stream the the basically the vocab for the story we've just read. So we just finished. Actually, this this is going to include through chapter nine. That's fine. We may or may not get to those words, but it's going to include、uh, the first nine chapters of of the story. So if we if we finish this quickly, we can move on to some other words as well. But、uh, we're just going to go through this and see how we do. Okay. So this this has a mix of、uh, English to Chinese or English to Cantonese characters to Cantonese. Listening to Cantonese and and translating to English, etc. So tonight is, 今晚今晚今晚 So I'll be playing the audio for each of these as well, so we can listen and practice practice listening to that as well. So 今晚 to introduce is a、uh, guy see you guy see you. Guy Siu. Bao Kut. This is one we just talked about today. Bao Kut is to include. Bao Kut. To include, incorporate, consist of. All together, the sum of in total. Yak Gong. Yak Gong. Yak Gong. This is Dai Ti Zam. This is subway station. Dai Ti Zam. 打字机 ，so this was an example I just gave earlier a few minutes ago. 打字机 is typewriter. 打字机 
to shout or call or order or ask. Uh, this could be gyu, ngwa gyu, I call. But order or uh, to order could mean something else, like ordering food could be something else. I think it's, I'm going to call it gyu. Yeah. Gyu. Ngwa gyu. I'm called, you can use it that way. Ngwa gyu, Robert. I'm called Robert. Ngwa gyu. Next we have fun. That's wan. Ho wan. Ho wan. Then we have jai gun. Recently. Jai gun. To remember. Gei da. Gei da. We have bathroom. So this could be a number of things. This could be sai sao gan. This could be cheng lang fang. So cheng, cheng lang fang is like shower, showering room. Sai sao gan is like washing hands room. Cheng lang fang. Cheng lang fang. Chao mian. So this is a listening one. Chao mian. That's a noodle dish. Stir fried noodles. Chao mian. Chao mian. Boyfriend. We learned this one today. So this is lam peng yao. Lam peng yao. Lam peng yao. Da xun. Da xun. So we didn't see this today. Da xun means like uh, to plan. Or with regards to regard as to plan. Da xun. Da xun. This is Gua Sing. Gua Sing is like a star, a movie star, or a, like a celebrity. Actually, I think this is more specifically sing a singing star. So Gua Changan Gua is to sing. So like a singer. Gua Sing. Gua Sing. Yeah. Sun Ting is to apply, like an application to apply for something. Sun Ting. Sun Ting. Come down. I just used this um, a few minutes ago as an example. Lot Lai. Come down. Lot Lai. Yi Qin. Yi Qin is uh, previously. This was the one I said that uh, Yi is the same Yi from Saw Yi, which means. Uh, Therefore, Yi Qin. And Tin is the same, that means in front, Tin Yat or Tin Bin. Next we have Dai Ha, which is that kind of strange classifier for like big buildings. Dai Ha. So let's, let's pause on this one for a second. I said it was Empire State Building. They talk about Broadway, mansions in Shanghai, it means grand buildings. Okay. This is mo. This is uh, for hat. Mo. Mo. Then we have Tom. Do you know what? Do you remember what Tom is? It was the title of the se second chapter we studied today. Tom Tong Si. Tom Tong Si. Uh, that one means to visit. Oh no, I got it wrong. So this one means wu, and this is to change. Uh, so wun sam is to change clothes or wun what else this says currency you could say wun wun teen to change money uh, so let me i get this one wrong a lot in my off offline studies let me pull up tom and maybe we can solve this once and for all as you learn more characters i think I think the likelihood of finding similar characters goes up quite a bit. So I, I haven't figured out a strategy yet for um, studying similar characters to separate them in my mind. If you have any thoughts, let me know. I'd be curious. So in this case, it's not actually that similar. Um, let me see. I can copy this from here. So we can see the left hand side has the left part of this character has sao for hand. Um, but it's when it's the same font, you can tell it's actually quite a bit different. So this one is wun. So it has the 
the box. It has the legs. I think part of it is it's long past due for me to uh, really buckle down and learn all the radicals. Typically, I'm learning characters and kind of holistically looking at them, which works to an extent, but now I'm getting to the point where I'm seeing lots and lots of similar characters. And so it's either you get a lot of repetition to really notice the differences, or I think probably the better way is um, learn all the radicals, or at least all the common ones, get those just memorized. There's a there's 215 or so, but I think uh, the top 50 or 100 most common gets you like most of the way there. Um, so I think this is a, probably the fourth or fifth time I've gotten this one wrong in as many weeks. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to take some time this week and maybe come up with a strategy for radical learning. Maybe we'll do some of that on stream. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll take, let me take a note on that. So anyway, so back to this. So this is wun, which means to change. So like I was saying, you can say wun sam, to change your clothes, or wun, probably wun teen. I've never seen that phrase, but it would make sense to me to change money. So I'll mark that. For, for those of you that haven't seen this, I'm using this flashcard program called Anki. And you as you go through it, you rank how easy or difficult uh, the word or the flashcard was. So if it's easy, it, it means that it'll show it to you less frequently every time you make it easy or likewise good. It'll show you, uh, depending on your rating, it'll show it to you more or less frequently in the future so that you're not, for example, you know, how many times do you need to see the flashcard for the number one where it's just a single horizontal stroke? Once you've learned that, you probably don't need to see that very often in the future, you know, maybe once every couple weeks or months, but not really that op that often. Uh, and then if you mark it as again, that means you didn't get this one. So I'm going to mark this as again. And then it'll prioritize bringing that up almost immediately for me to study a review again. So this is suck te, which is traffic jam, where te is car. Suck te. Suck te. Uh, this is Tung Sarang. Here's an example of another character I'm really struggling with right now. So Tung Sarang is usually Tung Sarang. But uh, check this out. So there's a number. Uh, what is it? Dong. There are a number of these that I know now that I guess by no, I mean I've been introduced to them. And there's another one or two others that are similar. And I can I cannot keep these straight either. I keep getting these confused. Uh, but if you look at it closely, you'll see there are quite a few differences in actuality once you see it side by side. Uh, Dong has a, a the teen, teen radical. This has the four boxes. And the uh, uh, Sarng has this, this other shape, this bow shape. So anyway, this is uh, usually Tung Sarang. So Ngo Tung Sarang Hai Godo. I usually go there. Ngo Tung Sarang Hai Godo. Dan Hai Yi Dan Hai Gam Yat Ngo Wei Hai Lito. So I usually go there. Ngo Tung Sarang Hai Godo. Dan Hai, but or however, Gam Yat Ngo Wei Hai Lito. However, today I'll go here. Tong Sarang. Okay. Surname Chang to succeed, to finish, to complete. So this is Sang, means to, to complete. Sing. Sing. This is used in Sang yet, always. This is used in a, I think, Sang, sang Wai or something like this, which means to change. Ho, si, ho Siu. So this is like a little less, a few. Yeah. Ho Siu. Ho Siu. Ho Siu. 
Um, don't remember this one. Hing took. Okay, Hing took to celebrate. All right, we just saw this. So which one was this? I think this was Wun. Wun to change. Yeah. And for some reason, the audio is not working on these cards. Wun. There we go. Wun. Wun. So you see there, since I, I marked it as again, it came back around pretty quickly for me to see it again. This was that Hing Zuk, which is to celebrate. Hing Zuk. Hing Zuk. Okay. All right. So we finished that. Um, I think we'll call it there for today. We're, we're going a bit long already as it is. But uh, next week we will, actually let me sync this quickly here. So next week we will finish up with Ling's Stories 2. And I'll also introduce what the next story will be after we finish Ling's Stories 2. Uh, so I hope if you see this uh, during the live stream or afterwards as a, a video on YouTube that you get some value from it. Please do give me feedback, either corrections for mistakes I've made, uh, suggestions for any uh, material you want to see or give me a sense of where you're at in your journey. Are you just starting out with Cantonese or or deciding whether to study Cantonese? Are you a bit further along as an intermediate? Are you a native speaker or an advanced learner? Um, as I said throughout the stream today, I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm still very early on my journey. And so my hope is that these are, you know, equal parts interesting and and valuable for other learners out there, but that are also motivational more, more importantly. It's motivational for me certainly to put these out there for everyone. And so I, that's why I do it is to help everyone else and also to keep myself motivated. Um, so again, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Give me your feedback and uh, we'll talk again same time next Sunday. So Sunday, 7 p.m. Central U.S. time. And until then, hope you have a good week. Take care.